In this short video, what we'll do is that we will take a look at the various interpretations of the hazard rate, also known as the default intensity. I'm assuming here that you have gone through at least once this topic on reduced form models. But if you haven't, then the guiding relation that we will be using time and again to look at the various interpretations of this hazard rate is the relation for the unconditional cumulative probability of default. So this probability over this period from today till any time t is basically given by 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. And this lambda is what we are referring to as the hazard rate. There is one more expression that we will be using and that's the expansion of e to the power x and which expands as 1 plus x upon 1 factorial plus x square upon 2 factorial and so on. Okay, Let's begin with the first interpretation of this lambda known as the hazard rate. This interpretation is that of a number which helps us arrive at the instantaneous conditional probability of default. So these two keywords are important, instantaneous and conditional. Instantaneous basically means that this probability of default is for a period which is a very tiny instant of time. Let's call this period as dt and this period starts at time t and ends at time t plus dt. The conditional aspect means that I am standing at this time t at which point I am assuming that I am estimating the probability of default over the upcoming tiny period of dt. In order to write this probability a bit more mathematically, I would write it in terms of the default time, which is a random number. And this probability would mean it's the probability that my default time is prior to or less than t plus dt. That means it's the chance that I default prior to t plus dt, conditional upon or given this fact that I have survived till time t. That means my random default time is after time t. It's greater than time t. In the generic sense that I were to assume that lambda, which in this case I have assumed it to be a constant, if I were to assume it to be a function of time, then I'll pick the value of lambda as of time t and compute this probability as lambda, which is an annual number scaled by the period for which I need this probability for, which is dt, okay? Now, let's take a slight deeper look into this. All I said was that the formula which I'll be using is the probability, the unconditional probability from today till time t. And this formula is 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. To get this conditional default probability, it would simply be equal to the unconditional default probability over this period from t to t plus dt, that divided by the survival probability from today till time t. Okay, let's do that. So I'm saying this is equal to the unconditional probability of default over this tiny period. What would that be? It would be the probability of default from today till time t plus dt, Based on this formula, it's simply minus lambda times t plus dt minus the probability of default from today till time t, which is 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. And I'm saying let's divide the whole thing by the survival probability from today till time t, and that's e to the power minus lambda t. Okay, so if you were to simplify this, in the numerator, I can take e to the power minus lambda t as common. Then I get 1 minus e to the power minus lambda dt. In the denominator, I have e to the power minus lambda t. This and this cancels. If I were to use the ex expansion of e to the power x for a tiny lambda dt, and therefore I truncate this expansion after the first two terms, you can convince yourself that this comes to lambda dt, okay? That's my first interpretation of lambda. It's a number which when scaled by the time over which you need a default probability for, this number gives you the instantaneous conditional default probability. Next, this was a formulation which was done in continuous time. 
I could have done a formulation of default in discrete time as well. And for that, I would have built something like a tree. Okay, this, this is like a binomial tree. This tree is a bit different from the trees that we see for stock prices or interest rates. The difference comes from this fact that the moment you reach a node, which is a default node, the tree stops growing beyond that node. Okay. So in my first time increment or time step, let's label it as delta t, there are two possibilities that can happen. Either I can default or I survive. If I survive, it again opens up two possibilities, default or survival and so on. So this tree, it keeps building on in this direction. So this conditional aspect of default probability means that I'll be using lambda to estimate my default probability, assuming that I am already standing at a certain node in future time. Okay, that means, for example, if I'm standing at this node, it gives me the probability of defaulting, that means landing up at this default node over this tiny increment of time delta t and as we have let's say reasoned out by now this probability is lambda delta t and therefore the probability of survival is 1 minus lambda delta t okay both aspects are highlighted here the conditional aspect and the instantaneous aspect now where do where do we where, where does this lead us from here if i say that my total horizon is t which I have, let's say, discretized or split into n time increments of delta t each, then n is equal to t upon delta t. If I were to hypothetically make my time increment or time step go to zero, it's like saying I'm making my number of time steps go to infinity. If your probability indeed is lambda times delta t, then what happens? Basically, lambda times delta t, the probability of default is going to zero. The number of time steps is going to infinity. If I were to take a product of the two, that means probability times number of time steps. If you remember, what does that mean? In the binomial world, n times the probability is the expected number of successes. Okay. So if I do something of that kind, that means I take the probability and multiply it with the number of time steps. Both of these are some functions of delta t, then you would see delta t delta t cancels and what you get is lambda times t. Okay, So what we've actually done is that we have satisfied the condition for something which till now we were assuming is binomial to now approach Poisson. Okay, So this gives us the interpretation that if you satisfy the conditions for the binomial to approach the Poisson, I can assume that the number of credit events, and here we are focused on the default event, follows something like a Poisson process. And that Poisson process, we say, is with this parameter lambda, which means that over a time which is of, let's say, time interval, which is of, let's say, t, the average number of or the mean rate of arrival of these credit events or default events is lambda t. That brings me to my second interpretation of lambda. It's, an, it's a parameter which helps me arrive at the mean rate of arrival of credit events which are assumed to follow a Poisson process. Okay, That's my second interpretation. Now let's come back to a third interpretation, which is a direct offshoot of this formula. If I were to start with this formula, try and get to the cumulative unconditional default probability for one year, that means I substitute, instead of t, I substitute a 1, and again I invoke this expression for the expansion of e to the power x, which in this case is e to the power minus lambda, then if I were to drop out the higher order terms, you would get a lambda, which basically tells me that lambda, my hazard rate, is approximately the one year probability of default if lambda is not too high. Okay, That's my third interpretation. Let's move on now. My fourth interpreta interpretation. If your credit events, the arrival of these events, has a Poisson distribution if they follow up, if the number of events over any interval follows a Poisson distribution, 
then the time between any two events is exponentially distributed okay so i'm saying number of credit default related events is poison with let's say this as my parameter lambda then the time between any two events is exponential and the parameter 1 by lambda okay and therefore i am saying the default time which is the time from today till the first arrival of a credit default related event because i don't care about the second event it's the first event itself which will cause a default and that's the end of the story and therefore my default time is exponentially distributed it's basically the time from today till the first arrival of a credit slash default event and i am saying that the mean or average of this distribution of t default is 1 by lambda it's not too difficult to actually reason this out if events are arriving in such a way that the number of events that have arrived is basically lambda number of events per annum then you would imagine that the approximate time on an average sense between any two events will be 1 by lambda if lambda is like a frequency number 1 by lambda will be like a time number okay and therefore the lambda it carries this interpretation as 1 by the, or the reciprocal of the mean or average time of default okay that's my fourth interpretation how about my last interpretation in this case this is like you know going back to this formula which this chapter on reduced form models touched upon i am assuming that i am looking at a zero coupon bond i am assuming that this bond will give me a zero recovery i am assuming that rates quoted to me are continuously compounded I am assuming that this particular bond is currently, let's say, trading at a spread Z over and above the risk-free rate, which means that on a per dollar face value basis, its current price is e to the power minus the risk-free rate plus Z times T. Let T be the maturity of this zero coupon bond. So if you were to simply use like a binomial kind of a model, invoke risk neutral pricing what would risk neutral pricing price this bond as there are two possibilities in future either the bond defaults pays you a zero because recovery is zero the probability of that happening again our favorite expression one minus e to the power minus lambda t the probability of that not happening that means the bond surviving e to the power minus lambda t and if that happens the bond pays you a one okay in the risk neutral world i would price this bond very simply as its expected payout discounted to today using the risk free rate which means i'll do 1 times this plus 0 times this discounted using the risk free rate and i should arrive at the same price which the real world is quoting that means it will be e to the power minus r plus z this times t should be equal to e to the power minus lambda t into 1 discounted to today at r which is this okay now this lambda i should actually qualify it as lambda star because it's like an implied lambda which is being implied using a risk neutral pricing so if I were to take a look at this expression, e to the power minus rt cancels on both sides. And if you were to take a log on both sides, you get this lambda star is equal to z. Okay. The interpretation, if you were to assume a zero recovery, if you were to assume a risk neutral context, then the lambda, which is my hazard rate slash default intensity, actually equals the credit spread, which a zero coupon bond, a risky zero coupon bond is trading with. Okay. So what we've done in this short video is to basically tie the dots, tie, tie or connect various dots together when it comes to the hazard rate lambda and its various interpretations.